Okay, welcome back everybody. Today we're going to finish up our lecture series for Earth Science and we're going to cover what climate is and what climate change is. Climate is considered the long term, which means more than 30 year averages of temperature, precipitation, winds, clouds, etc. in a region. A climate region is a large area that has similar conditions, and two main factors are used to describe the regional climate, temperature and precipitation. A region's temperature is influenced by its latitude, altitude, and distance from large bodies of water. Latitude means the distance from the equator. Closer to the equator is warmer, farther from the equator is colder. You guys already know this. Earth's surface can be divided into three temperature zones, the tropical, two temperate zones, and two polar zones, and you can see them highlighted here. Altitude is the height above sea level. Within the troposphere, the temperature decreases 3.5 degrees Fahrenheit with every 1,000 uh, foot climb in altitude on average. Distance from large bodies of water uh, means that you lose the moderating effect that water has on temperature. Winds off the ocean will prevent extremes in temperature, hot and cold in coastal regions compared to inland areas of the same latitude and elevation. So for example, Seattle has warmer winters and cooler summers uh, versus Minneapolis, which has colder winters and hotter summers. Ocean currents can also affect uh, a region's temperature. Warm and cold ocean currents move throughout the Earth's oceans, and ocean currents warm or cool the air above. Air moving inland is thus influenced by the temperature of the current. So if you take a look at the Gulf cur Stream Current, it's a warm current versus the Pacific Current. And again, we've talked about this before, but this is because of the Coriolis effect, because you see that it's cycling in a counterclockwise direction. Well, the Pacific Current is going to take make California's coast colder because it's pulling cold water down from the polar regions. The Gulf Stream is pulling water up from the equatorial regions and so that is creating a warmer climate there. The main factors that influence precipitation within a region are prevailing winds and mountain ranges. Prevailing winds are winds that blow inland from oceans and usually carry more moisture than winds that blow from overland. Coastal land areas receive more precipitation than inland areas. For example, Seattle is rainy, whereas eastern Washington is very dry. Mountain ranges affect it because warm human air riding, rising up against the windward side of a mountain loses its moisture as it ascends and cools, which is called orographic lifting. As, an, as the air moves down the leeward side of the mountain, it warms and is less humid and it produces a rain shadow. Most deserts and arid climates are located on the leeward side of mountain ranges. Also affecting the precipitation are the seasonal winds. Seasonal winds are the shift in wind directions over a given region due to the seasonal shift in the global jet streams. Monsoons are an example of seasonal winds. In a summer monsoon, wind blows in from the ocean onto land, and in the winter the monsoon reverses and blows from the land out to the ocean. Climate graphs are graphs of the average temperature that is combined with a graph of the average precipitation by month. The graph on this slide is the climate graph for New Meadows, Idaho in Adams County. Climate re regions are classified according to the combinations of temperature and precipitation. Climates in highland regions change rapidly as altitude changes. Dry climates include arid and semi-arid climates. This is a climate graph for Blackfoot, Idaho, and it's considered to have an arid or dry climate. It's considered um, an, an elevated desert. There are three types of temp temperate marine climates, marine west coast, humid subtropical, and Mediterranean. 
Temperate com continental climates include humid continental and subarctic climates. Subarctic climates have cool summers and cold winters. An example would be this one from Anchorage, Alaska. You can see it gets a whopping 58 degrees in August and September. Polar climates include ice cap and tundra climates. The tundra climate region stretches across northern Alaska, Canada, and Russia. It is assumed by scientists that organisms living in ancient times needed similar conditions to live as currently living organisms that are related do. Important sources of information regarding past climates can come from many sources, such as pollen, tree rings, ice, and ice cores. Pollen is when we examine the location of ancient pollen and help determine the type of climate it came from. Tree rings mean tell us that the thickness of a ring depends on the length of the growing season and also how wet it was. And ice cores, um, we test those because we look at the bubbles trapped in the ice and they can be sampled for the con uh, content of the air at the time that the bubbles formed. Some causes of climate change can include continental drift. The continents have moved over millions of years and these movements have resulted in climate change. Solar energy is another cause of climate change. The sun's solar output fluctuates slightly from year to year, usually on 11-year cycles. The increased sunspot activity is associated with an increase in solar output. Volcanic activity can also affect climate change because gases and dust block out incoming solar radiation, causing lower temperatures. Some of the short-term climate changes include El Nino and La Nina. El Nino is a shift in wind movement over the Pacific Ocean. Warm ocean currents move eastward toward the South American coast, and weather pa patterns are affected worldwide, and this occurs every two to seven years. La Nina is winter changes, and surface waters in the eastern Pacific are colder than normal, and climate changes are usually the opposite of that of El Nino. And now we come to global warming. Natural gases in the atmosphere such as carbon dioxide, water vapor, and methane absorb incoming solar radiation and heat up the Earth's surface. This natural process is called the greenhouse effect. Scientists think, though, that an increase in carbon dioxide in the air is a major factor in global warming. Chemicals also, such as chlorofluorocarbons, produced by humans have damaged the ozone layer. Large areas of reduced ozone, called the ozone holes, have been created over Antarctica and Arctic. Ozone loss leads to an increase of ultraviolet radiation from the suns entering the lower atmosphere. Health effects from the ozone loss can include increased risk of skin cancers, cataracts, and suppression of the immune system. Okay, so this was not a preachy lecture, as you probably expected it to be, but it is something that is a serious concern among Earth scientists today. That concludes our lecture series for Earth Science. I hope you have a great day, and make sure that you study for your semester exam.